So our next speaker is uh, the gentleman that I think many of you might have known because that's how you got here. Uh, and I mentioned him, he's the one who introduced me to, to Bitcoin uh, because he sort of got into it. I remember actually talking to him, I think almost a year ago, Chris, that you were sort of getting more into the silver and the gold uh, because he was looking for, you know, he was looking at what's happening in, in currencies around the world and fiat currency and a lot of the stuff that Freddie touched upon about how the so whole sort of global economic system, it doesn't really serve our needs as human beings. And he was looking into things like gold and silver and then when he got into Bitcoin, uh, obviously, he saw the opportunity was there and, and has been growing with it ever since. Uh, Chris Filiatro is an inter inter international entrepreneur, and he's been working with Japanese companies for 30 years. And he has a really interesting, I know his family, and I know Chris a little bit, it's a really interesting relationship because his kids are sort of perfect, kind of Canadian, half Canadian, half Japanese, and they go between both cultures perfectly. And, and he's working to bring these two cultures sort of constantly in communication with each other across the ocean. And so, one of the things he's been doing is sourcing new technologies that are like things that are happening in Vancouver, as Freddie brought up, is sort of like really happening Bitcoin here in Vancouver and Canada. And Chris is sort of connecting that with the Japanese market. And he's the president of Bitmaster Financial, and that's the company that sells uh, Bitcoins to the Japanese market. So please, round of applause for Chris for the actual food. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming to the uh, Bitmaster show here. I'm happy to be able to speak in front of everybody. Well, I got to say the first speaker, Freddie, really mixed it up for me because um, I'm going to tell you that arbitrage is great. And uh, I have a company in Japan that sells Bitcoins to the Japanese people through an affiliate model, which is pretty close to MLM. So thanks, Freddie. <laughs> Yeah, hey, and I said, we should have talked about this before. But anyway, Freddie said when we talked on the phone that he was going to kind of mix it up, and there you go. It was interesting when I was meeting people at the door, and I said to him, you're paying in bitcoins or cash? And cash is more expensive. They're going, I'm keeping my bitcoins. You can have this fiat currency. And almost everybody paid in cash. I found that really interesting because, uh, you know, bitcoins are valuable now. Here's a graph of bitcoins at uh, 900. And... Um, you know, actually, I was going to say, I started my presentation a couple of weeks ago. And uh, let me just get myself sorted here. And I knew what I was going to say. And I'm going to talk about interna internationalization because I lived in Japan for 30 years and I deal with Japanese companies. And I just want to, uh, and, and I'm recording this too. I'm going to send this news over to my Japanese brethren over there and let them know because they haven't really woken up yet for Bitcoins. It's just about to start. And I've assembled a dream team of translators and copywriters um, to work with. They're going to translate this, and we're going to send it over and start telling the Japanese people all about it. They're actually in the back here. If the three of them could stand up, and I could just uh, introduce you guys. Here's my dream team. You guys stand up. Come on, I know I'll put you on the spot here. But there you go. There's the three ladies that are going to help me conquer Japan. So, I, you know, as I went through the two weeks, and it was a really weird ride. I mean, Bitcoins are going up, and people were phoning me like Freddie, too, and, hey, you got some Bitcoins. No, I'm not selling mine. And it was, and I sold a couple of Bitcoins at uh, $250 a long time ago, and now they're 900 and I keep telling the guy I want my Bitcoins back, but he says no. <laughs> so, and I can only guess that most of you here, here have the same story. I had an opportunity to buy Bitcoins, and I, you know, I could have got them at such and such a price, and, but I didn't. So um, I have a nice little story here that you'll probably like. Here it is, this guy. This is gonna make us feel great. Dustin Curtis, an American, sold a web app on eBay for $10,000. The pair paid with 4,718 Bitcoins, which he immediately converted into US dollars at $2.12. <laughs> They're worth $3 million right now. So you think you feel bad? No, here's your guy. <laughs> So if we'd all bought 500 Bitcoins about six months ago, we'd be sitting at $400,000, but we didn't. Anyway, Justin Curtis, big hand for this guy. Way to go, yeah. um, anyway, I worked in Japan uh, for 30 years. I have um, three boys. They're all big now, 30, 29, and 22. And we all worked together in a family business, and we used to sell silver years ago. And uh, when the silver market started to languish a little bit, I said to them, we should get into Bitcoins. And that was a couple of years ago, and we've, we've never looked back since. We love Bitcoins, and we're, we're, we're just right into it. So the internationalization, I think Bitcoins are going to make it easier for people like ourselves who are developing apps, have products, 
um, or speakers who want to travel and get and make payments, um, the Bitcoins are really going to help us out. Uh, for example, one of the jobs that I used to do, or well, I don't do anymore, but we, I, my, I do with my children because we're all perfectly bilingual, is uh, I would travel up and down the West Coast. I traveled around America and Canada, but Seattle, San Francisco, and Vancouver is hot spots for uh, good technology ideas. So I would make a deal with the company, and we would either get the exclusive or non-exclusive rights to Japan, translate it into Japanese, and sell it into the Japanese market. We've been doing that for 15 years. When I saw Bitcoins, I thought, wow, this is the, one of the answers. And interestingly, Mt. Gox, the biggest exchange in Japan, um, is well known around the world, but still not very well known in Japan. And there's a cycle. Uh, it used to be about three to five years when we brought a product, we could kind of have, we, we'd find them first, bring them over, and then about three to five years, they'd become into the po Japanese popular, populace awareness, and we could sell it then. Now it's under a year, six months. So I think that we'll see a huge influx, like we are in China right now, of Japanese people going, oh, Bitcoins, okay, we get it, and they do have a herd mentality, and they will all start moving into Bitcoins, thus driving the price up once again. Um, so what I do right now in the company that I have is a company called Bitmaster Financial, and we sell Bitcoins to the Japanese market through an MLM network. Freddie? <laughs> now, it's, everybody says, well, MLM has a bad rap, and it does. There's a lot of really crappy things out there that people sell. However, Japanese people, the Japanese country is like one giant MLM country. Everybody introduced something and they pay them, the money flows there differently. It's just different over there. So the MLM business model works really well in Japan. And Nihon no minu-san, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Kore gara bitmasu to isho ni ippai iro no koto yarimashou. That was a little bit of Japanese. And so um, the other thing what we're going to do is we're going to allow the Japanese people, rather than setting up with Mt. Gox, to buy more seamlessly Bitcoins. And this is the big thing and the opportunity for a lot of us, too, is to be able to sell Bitcoins. Peter here, I've met him many times, and I still carry around the one Bitcoin that he sold me uh, years ago. I bought this for $120. I thought, man, that seems pretty expensive, but now it's worth $350. i am keeping it. And um, anyway, so th this company is just starting to go in Japan, and um, we're signing up about 100 members a month, and so people are really starting, the awareness comes, as the awareness grows, and the MLM model works, people introduce it, and it's, it works in Japan very well. Arbitrage. Now, arbitrage is very complicated because you're dealing across countries and international borders. It works for us because we have a company in Canada and a company in Japan. But what I want to say is that the internationalization or things that you can do, Bitcoins allow you to enter different markets that you maybe not were, were not able to enter earlier simply because you can take payment from them without having to worry about going to the banks and transferring money and doing all the things and say even having a bank account in Japan will soon not become necessary. So if you have a software or a product or something that you want to sell, you'll be able to tap into the market. If you know somebody in China, or you know somebody in Japan or Brazil or wherever it is, you can easily um, um, capitalize on that by using Bitcoins. Here's uh, a, an example I'm just going to show you. Mt. Gox is the most expensive um, exchange worldwide so far. As far as that. Actually, it's not. Bitcoin China is. And if you do the rate and you look at the um, uh, Chinese rate, they're about 10 bucks more. So the arbitrage opportunity is like this. If you buy Bitcoins from Vertex in Canada, which are generally 8 to 12%, and if you really watch it and you're a day trader, which is fun, Freddie, day trading, you sit in front of your computer, you have some... Um, you can get uh, fluctuations up to 20, 25% sometimes if you're on the ball. So what we do right now is um, I'm the guy in Canada that uh, buys for my kids. My kids are all set up over there. So I kind of watch the Bitcoins during the day and then I buy them and um, I, I buy them from Vertex and then I send them over to Mt. Gox and then we sell them in Japanese yen and that's our arbitra arbitrage rate. And then we take the Japanese yen, dump it back into fiat currency. Now there is another thing that you can do for people that are interested in that kind of stuff is you can 
take your Bitcoins and trade them for fiat currency pairs. So you can move your money from Bitcoins to US dollars, Bitcoins to Japanese yen, Bitcoins to Chinese yuan, and move them around, and there's an arbitrage opportunity there. Once again, it's pretty complicated, but if you take a look at it, and um, I've already taught a couple people how to do it, you need to set up stuff and you have it in place. Um, it would probably be good for people who are miners or no miners or into mining because if you have your Bitcoins and you mine them and then you can trade them on different exchanges for the fiat currencies and get into the game. Anyway, I just so for me, uh, I think that internationalization is a huge opportunity, especially for the good people of Vancouver. There's a huge Japanese community too here where I'm going to be teaching Japanese people about bitcoins and the opportunity to say even the other way around for Japanese people who are selling goods and services and that they could deal with Canadian people. Of course there's a language barrier but you can always get past that. One of the things that you have a hard time getting past usually is if you're going to send and the micro economy say for example where Freddie is in car surfing and you want to send ten dollars to somebody it's almost impossible but now you can do it with bitcoins. So lots of people that have um, lower priced goods, ten, twenty, thirty dollars you can't really send money from Japan over to Canada. Well, it costs $70 to send money. So if you're going to send $30, you've got to actually pay $40 to get it over here. And then they rip you off in the exchange rate. And it's, I mean, it's just, it's no good. Bitcoins have changed all that. So I believe um, that it, over time, Japanese people will be able to deal with, or, or in my markets anyway, deal with Canadians and North Americans more easily and the same way going over to Japan. And of course, anybody who can deal with China has this huge opportunity right now um, to get into the, to get in the Bitcoins in the Chinese market. Um, I just recently become a fun story, a broker for my girlfriend. She wanted Bitcoins and I said, well, I'm not selling them, but I guess I, you know, so I set her up and then she's doing day trading too now, Freddie which is really fun and she hardly knows anything about it but she likes to get it on your phone and bitcoins are up and it's a nice thrill so for a couple hundred bucks and you buy some bitcoins i agree with freddie buy a bitcoin get in the market and uh, hang on or day trade or play arbitrage thank you very much